Out of high school, my dad was very pragmatic about preparing me for life. And, you know, there's a lot of people who begged their kids to come home. My dad said, you're not just going to come home and farm. He said, you should go get a degree and get a job, get some experience. And if you still want to come home and farm, then you can. And so I went to USD for my undergrad, graduated, took my commission in the Marine Corps, and went on active duty and uh, deployed to both Iraq and Afghanistan. And then in 2012, I left active duty as a captain and then came home to start farming with my dad. And uh, I also went to, back to school, went to grad school at SDSU, farmed with dad, and then we started transitioning to me having all the farm uh, about two years ago. I'm John Schubeck uh, from Centerville, South Dakota, and I've got uh, four kids, and then my wife Megan. Megan works in town at the school, and my kids are 10, 8, 5, and then we've got a newborn. When I went to SDSU, because I'd just come out of the Marine Corps, my life was focused on IEDs and deployments, learning the trade of combat and protecting our country. So. I was kind of a clean slate when I left active duty and I went to SDSU and they started talking about this thing, no-till, you know, and they started talking about rotational grazing and all these things that really intrigued me. And growing up, I was so focused on athletics that, you know, I wasn't Mr. Farmer, Mr. Immersed in diehard farming practices one way or the other. And I just did what dad told me to do. I'd go run a tractor or pick rocks or fix fence or whatever. I never was interested in the why until I left active duty and went to grad school. That started getting me excited about the why. I just got really interested in sustainable practices and how to maintain the land. It wasn't just about maintaining the land. That's a fun plus, but it's also, it's enhanced our profitability. It was kind of, again, a practical decision. I always enjoyed the cattle more growing up because I have always been such an active person that turning circles on a tractor is not necessarily the most exciting thing in the world for me. It just fit, you know, ever since I was a kid, I really liked cattle, but living in Southeast South Dakota, having a ranch is not super practical, but I was fortunate enough to be able to get rental pastures and, and really make that expand. I really think there's a lot more opportunity for that than people let on because there's a lot of pasture out there and there's not a lot of people fighting over it. Most of the people that are in the cattle world, they don't want to take on building fences or you know taking on a problem pasture that might not have everything intact where you might have to put some sweat equity into it to make it work. And, that's where I made a lot of headway, is just taking on some of those pastures that other people were turning away from, and I was willing to put in some sweat equity and build some fence or something along those lines. I guess the biggest advice I'd give about the economic opportunity is the only person that should tell you no is yourself. You just go out there and knock on a door. Uh, I don't know how many doors I've knocked on and said, hey, I see your pasture's unused. Are you doing anything with that? Do you have any plan for that? You know, I've never taken pasture from anybody. I've always found pasture that's totally unused. Every piece of pasture I've got, there was something going on where the previous renter was no longer there or whatever the case, hadn't been rented for 30 years or something, and nobody wanted to deal with the fence or the grass. I just go in there, I would make up Word documents or spreadsheets with a proposal and just say, hey, I'll build this fence for you, you know, if you just give me a, a lease, this is what I can put into it, this is what I think it'll cost me, and I'll build this fence for you. I would say sustainable practices re reduce my stress level because I don't have all my eggs in one basket, which is awesome. You know, we've had a really dry spring and Everything I'm doing is really helping out with that. I know that my pastures are just fine. They've got lots of cover and adequate moisture, you know, even though we haven't hardly gotten any rain and 
Same thing with the crop fields. They've got tons of moisture there, but also just having diversity. I've got small grains, I've got alfalfa. I don't just have corn and soybeans. I've got cattle where if one thing is down, you know, the oil market is down right now and everything's tied to oil in the crop sector. Well, I've got cattle and I've got oats and I've got alfalfa and it really helps to tamp down the worrying when you've got diversity. I always say that I never want to fully retire. I always want to have something on my plate. And my grandpa, he was fixing fence at 97 years old and um, he'd come out and help me with little things. Or if I was gone, I remember one time my grandpa was 96 and the cows got out and my wife's got three kids and it's just her and grandpa came and helped and got the cows back in and you know that'd be kind of the way I'd like to do it. He lived to 99. I, I just think having something to do that you enjoy keeps you young, you know.